what's going on? Move the mouse here back in City Skylines with our Let's Play Season 7 episode number 12. And I think I'm feeling like it's time to uh, to come up here and start working on our mall. Uh, so the first thing I want to do today is get a new, uh, just a simple little diamond interchange up here. So that we can dump traffic onto this avenue. And then extend it and kind of make this space all a mall. So it's going to be a bit of a creative build today. Uh, maybe a bit of a time lapse as we... Uh, kind of start to fit some of this stuff in where it's going to go. Um, hmm. You know what? No, let's let's just, we'll, we'll be simple here. We'll just do, again, a simple diamond interchange. I don't think we need anything too fancy here just yet. Um, I want to get going on the actual build rather than uh, necessarily spending too much time on the highway interchange right now. So let's just come over here. You know what? We'll come just barely over the highway. Let's zoom in a little. So like so before we come back down. And coming out 12 units because again that's that smooth slope. But we can always tweak stuff later with, uh, with move it. And then we'll connect our highways from that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do kind of a 45 degree angle. 45 is actually way too tight. So let's bring it down. Hmm. Do something like that. And then we'll reverse this one direction that I messed up. And then we'll go back to our four lanes and connect this across. And this can just be a kind of a straight road that, that meets up with the other one. Like that. And we'll get that connected. And this can be kind of a, a little mall area one. And this will be our bigger mall area up here. So we'll carry this road on up. And I want to start hunting down all of my big box stores, so I got to remember what I threw in here. So we'll get a Macy's, we'll get a Best Buy, we'll do a Target. Do I have a Target? If I spell it right, man, I can't type today. And why don't we look through our poppable Rico, the uh, the high density stuff. So we'll have a TJ Maxx. This will be kind of more of a strip mall thing. Depot we can put over here. Well, not on this side, but uh, over here, basically. We'll do Michael's. Let's see what else we got. We've got some other strip malls and things like that that we could add in. Um, we've got some other fast food restaurants and stuff. Bed Bath & Beyond. Drop that in over there. This will be the uh, the less fun mall to shop at. Not that crafts aren't fun, but office supplies generally aren't fun. Uh, we'll fit an Old Navy in. Maybe there. Let's pause it. But that's a pretty good start. So what I want to do is grab the unique mall. Where is it? The Mall of Moderation. And let's throw it right there for now. We can kind of use this as a, a basis. Kind of have this act as kind of like the hub. And then the other big box stores kind of on the corners and on the angles. So let's actually move this for a minute. We'll waste a little bit of money here. But I want to define kind of our our intake and parking areas and things like that before we actually commit to uh, to moving any of these buildings in. So I want to come over to about our halfway point, and we'll do two lane roads. That's that's fine for coming in and out of our mall area. 
So probably right about here. Hmm. Maybe we'll do the decorative grass, actually, come to think of it. Just so that there's a little bit of a separation here. A little bit of difference. And then we'll have a road that maybe comes out over here. And over here, just a simple T structure that we can build some of our parking into. And then let's move our mall. The main kind of mall object right here, as close as we can get to the center. But then let's come in and kind of fine tune that with move it. I want to line that up as best as possible. There it looks pretty good. Let me just nudge it a tiny little bit. So we've got some parking kind of right up at the mall, but really we would be expecting to see a lot more parking lots in and around here. So if we go into parks, I've got a bunch of these, um, some that I've built, some that others have built. Is this, that's the bees parking lot. Okay. And then these are just kind of large parking structures that I put together. So people will enter where that arrow is. So if we do something like that, and malls should have just a ton of parking, we know that. We'll come back in here and decorate this with cars later on, because they're not going to fill up nearly as much as we would like to. Now, since this isn't quite big enough hub for what we want our mall to become, uh, what we're going to do is we can do move it, we can copy, and then we'll do a couple angles off of here. And we'll tuck our big box stores inside of it. But I'm just going to move stuff around just a little bit. And then this should come up so that it matches the height. But I think that creates an interesting look. We'll come back in here with the surface painter and cover up some of these other parking lots and maybe even angle some stuff around. But this is going to complain that it doesn't have road access. The downside to this, it might burst into flames and not be able to be put up by the traditional fire department, but the, uh, the helicopter service should be able to help us out. So uh, back in to move it. We'll do one more copy of this building. And we'll do the same thing. We'll kind of line it up as best we can down here. And get it to kind of snap where we want it. And then we'll come back in, escape. And just rotate this ever so slightly. And get it right on top of the other one. Now that just provides kind of the, the, the basic structure, right, for the mall. But we're going to kind of overwrite a lot of that. So one of our biggest stores is, in this case, Macy's. So let's move that with Move It. We could even kind of borrow the uh, the awning there if we wanted to incorporate that. So that's what the traditional front of the store looks like. If we wanted to move it back a little bit and just hide the awnings and stuff like that. We could have that little bit of awning kind of sticking out there. And it looks relatively centered. We could probably slide that over just a little bit. like that and you can see that now let me go into a uh, cinematic camera we've got kind of a big box store that's kind of blended into otherwise where our mall would be And I think what we could do is Old Navy is kind of a small one. So let's try and incorporate that over here. Somewhere kind of in the middle. And 
not quite the right angle, but pretty close. And we'll kind of overwrite this middle store as an old navy. I like that. That looks pretty good right there. How far back do we go? So what's actually sticking out? Not really too much here. So as soon as we get to that point, I think we're pretty good. Right there. The real detail work afterwards is going to be all about kind of surface painting, filling in the uh, the parking lot with some car props and things like that. In fact, let's see if we have anything right now. I don't know that I do. Got a golf cart. That actually may not be a bad touch for a little uh, a little security vehicle. Maybe that's parked like right out here by the entrance. Uh, space already occupied. Okay. So if we bring that over here. And then we move it. I could I think I could have dropped it with anarchy, but but maybe that's parked right there for security to kind of zip around the mall. I'll have to go download some car props, I believe, because I don't know if I have anything in here. I've definitely got car props that I've used in the creation of parking lots. I just don't know if I have access to them here. Got broken down cars and things like that. So yeah, I've got little ones here and there that we can do. But I have to kind of drop them on. Uh, looks like I need to do something with the prop, uh, prop and treat anarchy. I don't think I have that enabled right now. But we'll come in here with a bunch of cars, or maybe what I'll do is offline redo these parking lots and 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 drop cars into them so that when they plop down, they always have some cars. That's what I did over here with the Applebee's. So regardless of whether uh, the Sims choose to park here or not. They have parked this uh, this bus here, this recreational vehicle. This was not here um, in my build. So that's an actual vehicle that's stopping here. I think that one is too. And then I've got some of these other cars spaced out. But, uh, but we'll have a mixture of cars that will actually park here as well as cars that will plop down. Let's see what else we've got here. We've got a TJ Maxx. So let's bring that over. Whoa, and we'll rotate that around. See if we can grab it just right here. I mean, that's backwards. So let's see what kind of space that actually takes up across the building itself. So unfortunately with this one, the building has some junk props out back. But they don't really look the part right now, so we will we'll fix that down the road. We'll do this so that it just barely covers up that other entrance and center it as best we can. And I think that looks pretty good. Again, a big part of this is going to be providing some pedestrian paths, overwriting this, painting over this, because this, this doesn't exactly belong here. Um, we could kind of have some roads that bend off. And maybe I'll rethink this from a, you know, redesigning a parking lot perspective. Um, over here, these two I was thinking could kind of go in another little strip mall area over here. Um, not quite as small as this one, but maybe where we have a couple separate buildings, kind of similar look and feel. Uh, maybe a couple little mall plazas that spin off of one another. So we'll come to here about in the center. And we'll do two lane roads for this one. Maybe we can connect this from here. Like that. And we'll have this access road that again carries traffic behind. I take it back because those buildings are going to be a lot bigger than the little strip mall buildings. And we'll start moving some of these in. So. For this one, now 
Now, the, the real big stores, like in this case, the Home Depot, the Best Buy, those would kind of be central in your plaza. So let's line this up as best we can with the road. And drag that back just a little bit. Maybe even somewhere in there. So we'll do that. We'll get the Best Buy right next to it. So let's rotate that around. And you can kind of use the curbs as a as a guideline, right, to kind of keep things nice and tight there. And then we want a little bit of separation between the buildings, right? These these wouldn't be right on top of one another, but very close. Um, I do notice that there's some some garages in here, which would be a little tight to pull into, but we'll pretend we don't see those for now. We can always shimmy stuff around. And then what do we have here, Michaels? Come on. Wow. Rotation is not my friend today. And again, we'll use that curb as a guideline. So if we're nice and straight on that, we should just be able to drag it. And we're not rotating it when we move it back like that. So. And then what do we got here? Staples and Bed Bath & Beyond. These actually look like they're kind of designed to snap together. So we'll put these together over here. And let's get our Bed Bath & Beyond. I'd much rather be shopping over at the Best Buy. But that's a store that's kind of faded for me over the years. Um, it's really unfortunate what the big box stores do to uh, smaller stores in your area. Like, we used to have a really good camera store in town. And they just couldn't keep up with Best Buy. And Best Buy has a lot less selection, a lot less expertise when it comes to cameras. Um, you may run into somebody that knows what you're talking about. But most of the time, if you uh, if you had a question to ask, and I, and I don't mean any offense to anybody that works at Best Buy, you might have perfectly legitimate information. But a lot of times I go in there and I hear the employees talking to people about stuff. And uh, photography I know a fair amount about, and uh, just a lot of misinformation I hear. Um, for this piece right here, let's move Ikea out. Let's get a couple parking lots in here to support all this. So back into over here. The big ones fit. They do if I go that way. I don't know if I like it. Oh, I have Anarchy on. That's why it fits. So unfortunately for this person with the handicap plates, uh, they are parking very far away. So I will have to come in here and, uh, and change it up maybe. Now, how does that look with the road? Is that causing a problem at all? I don't think that it is. I think it's okay. And then maybe over here on this side, we could have a little road. Comes right down there. And that could be for our, our, that could be for our Ikea. And that might sort of be off to the side over like this. Now this is another one that if you're building, trying to build realistic, um, if you've ever been to an Ikea, they have massive parking garages. So this tiny little parking lot that's on here is not really doing the trick. Um, maybe we should do a parking garage for the Ikea. Let's do that. Um, we'll put it a little closer to the highway. Something that you'll see IRL as well is often these signs aren't just a sign for the store. They're a billboard so that when you're driving down the highway, you can actually see them. So that in a lot of cases, they might be much closer to the highway, kind of recessed and further back. And, and maybe we'll push this all back at some point. 
and use this space closer to the highway, have more of an intake road that dumps into the different parking lots and areas. But I wanted to get this project started because this is a big piece of kind of what's over here in this part of the uh, the coastal area is, is just a, a giant resource for for shopping. And um, let's see what we've got for parking garages. I've got a couple in here. We don't want to go bigger than the actual building, right? So that's that's too much. That's overkill. That's a little bit better. Um, we want something kind of kind of middle middle ground. These are insanely large. Was this one? That one might work. Let's see how that kind of looks. Wow, that is a that is a beater parking garage. Let's get rid of that. That's not quite the uh, the look IKEA is going for. Um, smaller, simpler parking garage. Again, kind of beat. Maybe I'll try and find a bigger IKEA so that we can use a bigger garage next to it. What was this? Small parking garage. We'll try this one. It's it's so huge in comparison to the store. But like I said, if you've ever been to an IKEA. They do have a massive parking garage. This isn't the right size asset, so I'll see if I can find another Ikea. Maybe if I can break out the billboard separately, we'll kind of put it again up closer to the highway. But that's a start for our little shopping area. Now, this is complaining that it doesn't have water because it, it hasn't been moved there yet. What's this last building that we have? A Target? So let's move that also. We can kind of put that sideways over here. And again, we'll come back in here. I'll show uh, Surface Painter off for those of you that haven't used it at some point. We will uh, kind of tighten up the uh, the areas around the mall. It enables us to paint things like, you know, asphalt and um, even paint uh, farmland and things like that. Um, but let's make sure our water's all covered down here. And I think we have to finish off at the mall. Because we haven't come down that far yet. Come all the way down the street. We'll cover all this. It should all be powered. Power should spread just fine. Just in case we zone over there. But I don't think that we will. And we'll come in again and, and detail this and kind of fill this in. Um, we might try and find a sign over here, you know, a big, big stand up for the mall. We could probably stand to fill in some trees here. Now, these would probably be uh, very organized and spread out a little bit because you don't want to delete this one. Delete these couple random trees that we got out here and really landscape it. Um, do that so although you might see you know some trees and some structures like that through here let's go from about that that first dotted line after the arrows so yeah you'll definitely see some some lines of trees and things like that and some shrubbery but you don't want it to to hide the the buildings behind the scenes you want to be able to see the mall and all the shops from the street. Those are casting some enormous shadows at this time of day. But now you can see again, it's starting to look a little bit more the part. If we hide our other views. Now we will leave a traffic light here because you would expect to see a lot of traffic coming in and out of the mall. Um, could probably leave these over here, but these are a little bit close. This one's a little bit close together. Maybe we can make this an, an inbound only lane. Let's try that. Let's make this so that that's a road that's coming in, but not introducing traffic to the outside like that. 
and then we'll just do it the old-fashioned way for a moment we'll click on the street name junctions and uh, this is a one-way so that automatically gets rid of that traffic light that's perfect this is a traffic light in here and we'll say that you can turn right coming in here but you can't turn left that we will do with traffic manager the lane connectors and we're gonna say that you can go straight but that's it So we'll do that and then these roads can go that way and this one can also come in to either of these lanes that's totally fine so right turn only if you're coming from the other direction you want to come in you've got to use the traffic light but a big part of making this again really come alive is going to be filling this in with cars um, I think IRL this would be this way instead Right, doesn't that make more sense that the, the lanes will be kind of lined up that way? But then again, that's forcing people to come all the way up in here and then in to the lot that way. And I, but I think that's okay though. So we'll do that and that. I think that makes a little bit more sense. You'd, you'd see kind of the rows stacked up vertically like that rather than horizontally towards the mall, carrying traffic up that way. Um... We could do another one of those intake roads over here, but I don't think that would be really used. We'll uh, we'll come back and tune and tweak. That's a start. Let's hit play. Let's see who's complaining about road access and stuff like that. These people are. Um, there's nothing we can really do about that the way that we have this currently set up. What we do want to make sure, though, is... Can we... Can we give them road access for now until I do some hidden roads? Because hidden roads will be necessary to actually support these businesses. So maybe we can do that for now. Have them stop complaining about the roads. And we can always rethink the layout if we don't want to totally cheat it. But let's do that for now because they'll stop complaining about not having road access. And then again, we can... Do a couple different things. There's hidden roads that we can drop in. Um, and those can be really useful for doing stuff like this. They're also really useful if you're trying to build a, uh, a fifth element style city of the future with, uh, with flying cars. And if you want them kind of driving around up in the sky, you need invisible roads to do that. So looks like we've already got some, uh, some traffic coming into our businesses over here, which is nice. Got some foot traffic as well. We do have our first car parking there in the lot. Appreciate that. Thank you. Because these structures themselves actually don't have parking. So we can see people coming in here. They should turn up onto Daffodil Street to actually turn into the parking lot if they do. Why is the Duff truck delivering to Best Buy? Did you guys start selling alcohol? Did somebody, didn't, uh, somebody didn't tell me? Can't get enough of that wonderful Duff. I realized that we had this problem kicking around since the beginning of the episode. Um, so we should probably take care of that. Do a little collapse on that one. And we'll bulldoze and we'll replace it. Apologies if that was your final resting place, but the game makes it way too slow to empty them. So a uh, quick recap of kind of where we're at, I think would be in order. Electricity, we're golden. I shouldn't say golden. We'll need something eventually, um, but we're good for now. Water availability and sewage availability is doing great. Garbage processing somehow has really caught up well. And I think I can start getting rid of these now. I th Let's see how our pollution's doing. So we'll skip ahead. We'll skip down to pollution. We've got one little pocket of pollution in the water. A little bit up here. So let's move these around. Hopefully we'll get these to, to clean up pretty fast. We'll do that. We've got a couple up here. So let's just surround all these. There's like no water flow happening here. So 
We may have to move these a couple more times. I got some water flow going by adding in um, some outlets. But as you can see, we're doing pretty well on the pollution front. I uh, remember why. I dropped this in. I dropped this in in between episodes. Um, I dropped in all the uniques that we needed for the Eden Project and then deleted most of them because a couple of them, like the Cathedral Plenitude, are just massive. They'd have no business in here. Um, but I thought this would be kind of nice as a decoration in an industrial sector or maybe by the airport or maybe, um, you know, by our ultimate recycling plant once we finally drop that in. But uh, I don't know. I, I just wanted to clean things up a bit because we had very low water flow out there in the river. And that's my fault because I built the map. So as this all settles down, we'll we'll move those around one more time. The uh, the floating garbage collectors. And uh, yeah, we'll 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 get there. We're, we're getting very close on removing all the pollution from the map. The Eden Project being very central to that, though. Happiness wise, I'm always a little lower on commercial happiness. Looks like industrials not so happy either because they're getting abandoned like crazy. Um, healthcare. Healthcare, we are doing great. We've got good coverage. We've got very few sick citizens and we're pretty green for the most part. Death care also, we are in the green for crematorium availability. Cemetery usage is pretty good at 36%, so we're good there. Uh, I think I skipped over education. We need more elementary, we need more high school. Um, let's see, where do we need elementaries? Definitely. Oh man, definitely need them over here. We've got a high school there. We don't have an elementary though. So let's do that. That does get us up into the green. We don't have one down here. Can we cram one in our park? That would be awesome. Um, we can't put it there because of the fence, but it also looks like it would be a little bit tight. So maybe next to our hospital over here, we could do one more. Do we have any buildings that I definitely want to keep? Five guys? That's okay. We have two laundries over here. Maybe we can get rid of one of those. So one more elementary school kind of up here on the corner. It looks like we're going to get rid of both elementaries to do this. We've got a Duncan's here, a Duncan's there, a Duncan's there. We've got two five guys. So maybe we can get rid of that five guys. That's totally fine. We've got to do some of this cleanup as we go through. We'll start zoning some buildings, or plopping some buildings, rather. But that gets our elementary good and into the green. We're a little bit light over here, right? We could probably do another... Whoops. Whoops. Sorry. Bad mirroring. Very bad mirroring. Uh, please move back in. Beautiful coastal property here, available on the cheap. Now with fresh drinking water. Let's clean some of that up. At least those ones that are complaining should stay put. Now we've still got a really struggling commercial sector up here. I've got to find some ways to boost that. One of the ways is going to be by extending this bridge over here, having some more residents over this way, and having this be the one of the closer commercial sectors to them. That should help support that a lot. Our drinking problem is still going strong in Portsmouth. We've got Moe's everywhere. They've got the monopoly on all the bars it looks like in town. Let's just do a quick check over here. Make sure nobody's complaining about anything in our mall. Look at that traffic. Wow. Look at how popular Macy's is. Man, what we should do. Traffic manager, parking restrictions. Get people off of these streets, right? They shouldn't be parking here. Should be parking in the parking lots. So let's get them out of there. And you can see it kind of shifts the logic around a little bit where it thinks people should be. Holding shift while you do this also will go all the way down to the next intersection. So if I just click it once, I'm saying don't park right here, but you can park down here. If I hold shift, I'm saying don't park on the entire length of the street. And that moves some people around. Oh, one more. The main road coming in. We need to do that one too. So restrict the parking on there. And now things are starting to look a little busier even before we've added in some uh, some actual parking spots. So I'll, I'll try and come up with some ideas here. I think we're going to... I'm trying to think. I, I would like to hide these parking spots here. But I think people are going to park there anyways. 
So maybe we do have kind of these angled roads and, and we'll bring a road around the mall and maybe do something like this. Let's look at this real quick. What if we did this? Let's pause it. Let's move this up here. And we could do something like that and then we could surface paint and, and make this make this pavement, maybe even make like a little triangle lot or something like that. Um, but if we come back into trees and we're using our line tool again and we still have the conifer selected, we could do something like this where we're coming right from here. Will it let us get one more in there? Maybe like that. And then we'll do another one right here, right about where that tree is all the way out this way something like that that could be okay and it basically achieves the same thing right we're just we're just moving that around but i think that could work so let's let's see what that looks like if we do the same thing on this side so we'll move this one Center it as best we can, which looks pretty good right there. And then we'll do our, our prop line tool trick with the trees. And from right about there. Like so. And then if we do a single tree, we can kind of fill in these uh, these little gaps on either side. Like that and like that. And I think that's looking more the part already. So we'll we'll have to give it a little bit of time for people to come back in here and, uh, and park in some more of these lots. We will probably, again, surface paint and, uh, and make this pavement and maybe do some like, you know, kind of behind the scenes, some trailers that are parked in here that aren't part of the normal, um, you know, parking for the, the people that are visiting the mall. Um, some like service buildings and things like that. Some stuff we could kind of tuck in there just to make it look again, a little bit more the part. But I think that's a, that's a pretty good start. It's a pretty good spot for today. So again, we've, uh, we've used three mall of moderations and kind of merged them together, provided some new facades to some of the stores. So we've got a TJ Maxx, we've got an old Navy, we've got a Macy's and those kind of all blend into the mall relatively well. I mean, it's not perfect. I'm not the most creative builder, but I've got some tricks up my sleeve. And then we'll keep working over here. Um, same thing. Let's do parking restrictions to get people off the road and into the lots. Nobody should be parking on any of those. And did I do that over here? So I didn't put parking restrictions on that. I should do that. And same thing here, parking restrictions on this side street. We have parking up here, that's fine. We'll uh, we'll fill that in some more, but we've got some, uh, some decent commercial representation in town with some actual businesses. We did this in a much earlier episode. But then we've got some of the other big box stores. But do I have these lined up really strangely? They just look a little bit off. Yeah, height-wise. Uh, escape, move, page down. That looks a little bit, a little bit sharper now, I think. Get back just a tiny little bit. That was too much. That was too much. Right in the middle. Too much. We're going to get it. There we go. Good enough. Good enough for now. So I will do a little flyby here. Look at this. Look at what we've done. What have we done? What we've done is we've forgotten to turn off the traffic lights up here. Um, and it looks like all the traffic's coming from, from this way. So let's do this. We will traffic manager, switch traffic lights. Let's turn off the traffic lights at these two intersections. That one not have. Okay. But that should help that flow a little bit better. And then if we wanted to, the other thing we could do 
is highways, four lane, and provide, especially on this side, let's give an extra lane so that up here there is an additional exit lane, or there is, I should say, an exit lane. Um, that forces everybody that wants to go straight to stay to the left three lanes. Anybody that wants to go off automatically going to take that right hand lane. So even if you don't have traffic manager, if you're playing without mods, if you're playing on console and kind of trying to follow along with some of the basics of this build, I know today's episode was really tough with all the custom assets, but this is a fantastic trick to kind of guarantee that exit lane. And then at least people that are backing up shouldn't be the ones that are going straight. They should be the ones that are getting off the highway. Now we couldn't prove this also by having a longer kind of collector lane that comes out here, but we'll see what this does right now. You know, this is all backing up to here, which is backing up to here. So maybe we give these people coming off the highway priority. Let's try that one more trick. So we'll come over here. We'll say priority and these side streets have to yield. And that will just constantly force this traffic coming off of here, coming into our malls to, uh, to at least have the right of way. And uh, that may back things up elsewhere, but, uh, but we'll see. Sometimes you're just moving traffic problems around, not necessarily solving them, but maybe putting them someplace a little bit out of sight. But we've got a lot of heavy traffic coming through here. We'll do a couple more sparse neighborhoods over here. We'll separate this side out with some trees maybe. Get some more residential in there. We do have a, a, a fair share of residential demand right now. So I think in our next episode, we'll figure out some new neighborhoods. Maybe we'll round out this area over here. Bring this highway up into one of these main avenues and start to fill in this space that you see on screen. That might be good to kind of really round out the, the Portsmouth area proper um, before we then expand out into other areas, before we continue to work on uh, our airport and industrial. This is... If I didn't mention it last episode, this is very much stage one. We're going to have a, a fairly large industrial sector over here um, as we start to move more and more of this out. Imagine just kind of taking this, transplanting it down here. We'll have things like our city service and uh, recycle, ultimate recycling plan will be eventually, hopefully over here. Hopefully it can support it. Um, but as you can see, we've definitely got some traffic problems. We've got a lot of trucks piling up over here. Um, I've got them yielding. Let's do the opposite of that. Let's get these cars off the highway. Because that's not helping. We'll see where things are backing up. We will uh we'll we'll have to make some some tweaks and improvements. This looks like this has sorted it out quite a bit. We're we're running into a little bit of a problem here. Uh maybe what we could do. One more thing before we go. Traffic manager. If you want to go straight, stay in the left lane. If you want to go right, get in the right lane. If you're turning left, take the lane closest to you. If you're going straight, stay the outside. And then again, closest to you. Closest to you. That should open things up a little bit. But we'll see, you know, we're, like I said, we're creating traffic problems. It's unfortunate, but it is, uh, it is the business of city skylines to, to create traffic problems and manage them the best you can. looks like people are really digging the uh, parking garage at the Ikea. I like that. This, uh, seen a lot of those RVs. They, uh, apparently came to do some serious shopping. Um, either that or they, maybe they live in their RV and they're looking to refurnish it. Uh, that guy just drove through all of those cars. Zero Fs were given. Um, all right. So I think that's a pretty good spot. I think this is a, a, a good stage one of the build. This is all about really sketching out ideas. And we're going to keep coming back and tuning and tweaking and improving. You hear me say it all the time. But sometimes you just got to throw paint on the canvas. You just got to sketch some ideas out. You just got to drop some buildings down to get a feel for what it's actually going to look like what kind of traffic you're actually going to see. Um, so this gives us a good start. You know, we've expanded a bit down here. And again, we can start to fill in and detail in later episodes. Really making this area come alive is is really going to be a big help from the surface painter and adding in some little props and little things around it. Um, so we'll see this change uh, quite a bit over the, uh, the next coming episodes. But we've got to get going on residential first. So that will be our focus in the next episode. 
But that's all for today. So hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, likes, comments, and shares all help the channel a lot and are greatly appreciated. If you're new here, subscribe and consider hitting the bell to get notifications for updates in this and other series. We're doing a fundraiser this season for Able Gamers. There's a donate link on the page, and I believe that's accessible via mobile, but definitely on the web version of YouTube. So do consider donating if you can. It's a fantastic cause, and all the ad revenue from this season is also going to that charity. Follow me on Twitter and join the Discord if you want to get involved in the discussion. Lots of great fans of the channel and of cities over there. So come on by if you've got any questions or getting stumped on something, and somebody will definitely be able to help you out. But with all that out of the way, until the next one, this is Move the Mouse, signing off. <laughs>